and um, how it is with each cycle of chemo that you get. The blood counts drop down low. After the chemo is finished, then the stem cells and the bone marrow start working again, and the blood counts come back up, and then they say, okay, time for the next cycle. Um, most chemotherapy is given in cycles like that, and the reason is to protect the stem cells. Because if we give too big of a dose of chemo all at once, it actually wipes out all of the stem cells, and then the blood, the blood will not come back up afterwards. And so most chemo is given, you know, how you've gotten it, which is, you know, cycles, you know, um, to let the blood counts recover in between and, and protect those stem cells. Um, with Hodgkin, we know that once it's come back once, as it has in your case, it's unlikely that further standard cycles of chemo is going to be enough to cure the Hodgkin's permanently. So even though you've had two cycles of the ice and the PET scan says that you're in a complete remission, it's unlikely to stay that way unless we do the stem cell transplant, okay? So what we do with transplant is we can actually collect some stem cells from your blood, and I'll actually go through how we do that process. And then what we do is we store those for you in, the, in a freezer, basically, okay? And then for the transplant, what happens is you go into the hospital and you get a <coughs> one-time, much larger dose of chemotherapy that's much more effective at curing the Hodgkin's, okay? But because it's such a bigger dose of chemo, it wipes out all of the stem cells that are in your bone marrow, and now your blood counts will not come back up, and we can't leave you with no red blood cells, white blood cells, or platelets. So what we do is we pull your stem cells out of the freezer and we give them back to you, basically like getting a blood transfusion, okay? And these stem cells are smart and they work their way back into your bone marrow and they rebuild your blood and your counts come back up. So the stem cells are not really treating the Hodgkin's, they're just allowing us to give you a one-time bigger, more effective dose of chemo than we would normally be able to give you. Okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the first order of business would be to collect your stem cells, okay? Um, the fancy word for that is apheresis. Okay. Now, normally the stem cells are only in the bone marrow. A long time ago, we used to call this bone marrow transplant because the way that we got the stem cells before was to actually take you to the operating room and do a bone marrow harvest from the hips and physically extract the stem cells out that way. We don't do it that way anymore. What we do now is give you a small cycle of standard chemo. What we'll use actually is ice, just minus the C part. Okay? It's a five-day hospitalization stay, with the first day just being IV fluids, three days of chemo, and then discharged on the fifth day. Then you stay here in the Houston area as an outpatient, and you get Neupogen every single day for about a two-week period. And what that does is stimulate your bone marrow to make a whole bunch of extra stem cells that get pushed out into the blood. That way we can collect them from your blood using this apheresis machine, which basically looks a lot like a dialysis machine, or if you've ever donated plasma or platelets before, the same machine they used for that. And basically it just filters your, your uh, blood. You'll have a, a special central catheter. It's got two little ports on the end of it, and the blood just comes out one side, spins through the machine that keeps the stem cells, and the rest of the blood comes back to you through the other side. Um, so the whole process of the collection with the five-day hospitalization stay, about two weeks as an outpatient on the Neupogen, and then most people need maybe two to five days of collection as an outpatient also on the machine, ends up being around a th about a three-week or so period for the total collection. Um, now we've got your stem cells. They're in the freezer. You're ready for the next part, which is the stem cell transplant. Okay, so for the transplant, you go back into the hospital, and it is a longer hospitalization stay for the transplant, usually around about three weeks, okay? Um, the first week that you're in the hospital, you're going to get this bigger dose of chemotherapy, okay? After the chemo's done, then you get your stem cells back, and then these stem cells take about seven to ten days to start working. 
So that's why we keep you in the hospital, because your blood counts are still going to be really low until the counts come back up, usually by around the end of the third to beginning of the fourth week, you can be discharged, okay? Um, and then we'd still keep you here as an outpatient for another couple weeks just to monitor you, make sure that the blood counts are stable, you're eating, drinking, and recovering well before we'd allow you to go back home to Dallas where you'd continue to be followed closely by your local oncologist there and we'd kind of coordinate follow-up and things of that sort, okay? So it is a longer process, um, but it is one, you know, that will hopefully be able to, to cure the Hodgkins, and Dr. Nieto can talk to you about some of the statistics with that, too. Okay. Okay? Questions? I know that's a lot of information at um, one time. <laughs> when do I do this part right here? Honestly, you're pretty ready to do it now. The problem is we're just meeting you, and we do not have insurance approval to do that. When, when was your last cycle of chemo? The, when you I started 9-11. 9-11, and so it was finished, what, on the... Four days later, so 9 16. So you are more than a month out yes. from your chemo. So if we had approval from your insurance company to do all of this, we'd probably start it here pretty soon. Um, so what we need to do is probably get that very quickly. Um, well, you're going to be meeting with our business office today, okay. um, and they're going to look at your insurance and see if there's any additional testing that you need, such as a breathing test, a heart test, things of that sort. Every insurance requires different stuff, so we'll try to get that done as urgently as we can. Um, once once they look at stuff, they, they can kind of <coughs> tell insurance companies that they get approval quickly from, and sometimes it takes a little longer. This is very standard for Hodgkin's, so I don't foresee there being any issues. <coughs> but it usually does take us a couple weeks to get everything and get it submitted and go through the process. Um, so you may need to get one additional cycle of the ice if there looks like there's going to be lag time here mm -hmm. because we don't want the Hodgkin's to come right. back, you know, before the transplant because the best results come when you're in a good remission going into the transplant, which the PET scan shows that mm -hmm. you that you are. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll, you know, we'll, so, Dr. Nieto is going to come see you and we'll kind of talk about that and kind of make a decision mm -hmm. as, as to if we, you know, I, since I think some of it's going to depend on the insurance, how quickly we can get it. If we can get it quickly, mm -hmm. you, you know, then we might just do it now. If it looks like it's going to take a couple of weeks, you're already four weeks out from your last chemo. Mm -hmm. right. So waiting another couple of weeks, that's going to put you, you know, six mm -hmm. to seven weeks out, which is probably too long, and we might worry about it coming back at that point. So we'll discuss it with Dr. Nieto and with your local doctor as well mm -hmm. and kind of make a decision as to what everybody thinks is best. Mm -hmm. okay. And you're saying, I'll be here for a couple weeks for this and then a couple weeks. Three weeks for this, three weeks for this. Right, so the collection process usually takes around about three to four weeks. I usually plan for four, just just, just in case some people take longer to collect than others. Okay. So I usually say plan about a month for the collection part and plan about another month for the transplant part um, and then a couple weeks as an outpatient. So total time usually ends up being about two and a half months or so here in Houston. And what's the time before between mm -hmm. this one and this one? Usually like pretty weeks. quickly because um, we need a minimum of three weeks in between chemo cycles. Okay. So if the collection is usually finished up right about three weeks, okay. which puts you pretty close, then there's usually a couple of days of testing or things like that in between. So they'd be and like, then no, you're pretty home. ready. They'd probably be just staying here for it depends on how quickly you collect your cells. So if you surprise us and you collect cells, you know, really soon, you know, yeah, then we might have a little more leeway but we don't want too much time to go by in between the collection chemo and the chemo for transplant because we don't want to give it time to time to come back in between. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of it So what are we doing tomorrow? About. Tomorrow you what do you is there probably the echocardiogram the and the pulmonary function test, the I, bone marrow biopsy. I'm gonna talk with him and see um, if he thinks that you need that or or not. When was the last bone marrow that you had though? Was that at the time of diagnosis? Yes, August. We actually probably then should do the bone marrow biopsy just to confirm that there's absolutely nothing in the marrow because we wouldn't want to collect any 
of the lymphoma cells and the marrow and then give them back to you. Okay. So we we'll, should definitely probably go ahead with the um, bone marrow biopsy. Mm -hmm. um, and um, there's probably the, the pulmonary function test, which is the breathing test, the echocardiogram, which is the heart test. Mm -hmm. And then um, some insurances require other tests, so and they're all different. So when you meet with the business center today, <coughs> we'll go through that with you. And if you need anything, then we can just add it on. The insurance thing, we've been talking to Sylvia. You've been approved to have a consultation here uh, for transplant, okay. not approved for the actual transplant. So we have to see you first. We have to decide on a protocol and a treatment plan for you. Uh, okay. Then we submit all that off to the insurance company. And, and, okay. and then we go from there. So you were approved for a consultation to be evaluated for a stem cell transplant. Yeah, it's going to be a long process. for evaluation. I know, I know. It's, it's a long process. Okay. Okay. I just, okay. Yeah. We, I thought only just three weeks in. So knowing two and a half months here is. Yeah, it's a long process. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 So let me have um, Dr. Nieto come see you. He'll go through some more stuff in detail with you. He can talk to you about some of the statistics and cure rates and different treatment plan recommendations, <coughs> you know, things of that sort. Mm -hmm. um, and then you'll meet the coordinator, and she's going to give you um, a booklet that's got all of this information in it. My, my art isn't very good. Um, and then um, you'll meet with our business center, too. Okay. Okay, so I'll be in just a minute. Let me listen to your heart and lunch.